time to introduce nerd files for season two. Uh, Amy and I are packing up. We're just about to fly to Europe to finish ski picking for the season, and we'll be picking a bunch of these helium skis. This is the new DK construction helium model lighter weight premium ski from Fisher. It has not yet been totally adopted on the World Cup. It's there, it's been there for about four years and it's being used, but it hasn't replaced older models. And I wanna talk a little bit about the nature of lightweight skis, the evolution of what lightweight skis and some of the challenges involved with building them and what I think the future of this helium model is along with other lightweight skis from other brands. The problem has never been one of making a light ski. Fisher made really light skis in the 80s. This 200 centimeter classic ski is 490 grams without a binding on it. Um, this one I think belonged to my Aunt Hepper, uh, Uncle John's wife who died several years ago. Um, I took it out of their basement and set it up for myself. Really nice ski. Actually by modern standards, it's really not a very nice ski. It was at the time though. In time, Fisher skis evolved to be heavier. This 2005 RCS ski, which was top of the line at the time, is 556 grams. That's, yeah, 66 grams heavier than the ski from the 80s, 20 years earlier. Um, why heavier? Well, they're making faster skis all the time. The material evolution took them to a heavier construction. That's what was running well, and that's what they produced. They did come out with the carbon light ski in 2006, and this was an effort to make the skis much lighter. Um, a lot of what Fisher is manipulating in these various constructions is the sidewall thickness. A lot of the structure of the skis is in the sidewall, and as they built up the sidewall thickness, even though the core in these skis is the same as it is in this, they got heavier. The carbon light ski uh, introduce the idea of a transversely mounted sidewall material. So it's got air core in the middle and then it has air core mounted sideways instead of vertically on the sides to provide lateral strength to the sidewall. Um, the sidewall provides a lot of the material strength in the ski and this is how they made the ski lighter. At the time that this ski was developed it was really cool because the core was molded before the ski was molded. So they they took the core, which was the central piece of air core plus the two laterally transversely mounted pieces of air core and a wooden base laminate. And they molded those all together with a camber in them and that core held some energy. And then they built the ski around that pre-molded core. That didn't last very long. It was really hard to control the cambers. And while some of these were super, most of them were really not super and it didn't work out. Within a season, they were back to making neutral flat cores and putting them into the press with the rest of the materials to form the ski cambers. The carbon light was never super successful. It was never really adopted fully at the World Cup aside from some specialty models. RCS cores remained the norm at the highest levels of skiing. Heavier skis on the World Cup, who knew? Well, I guess the people who were skiing them did. It's, it's worth noting that the evolution of skis periodically seems to focus around lightening the weight and then goes back toward creating speed. So why do we want light skis anyway? What's the purpose of having something really light? If we look at alpine skis, there's basically no accommodation made for weight. Those things are tanks. They're made simply for gliding. And frankly, if they wanted to build a cross-country ski simply for gliding, lightweight wouldn't be the primary objective. The reason we want lightweight is for active speed, moving speed, the speed that we can produce in motion. We need to lift that ski, move that ski. We need to move the ski laterally in skating. That's why they took the hole out of the hole ski to save seven grams of weight at the tip, which feels like a lot when you start swinging that ski side by side. And uh, it's you know, multiplied out by the length of the forebody of the ski from your foot. That's a big deal. Um, so lightweight really, really matters when you're moving the object, accelerating the object over and over. There's a big energy savings to lighten the weight of the ski. But there's also material costs, and it's not that easy to understand what the cost of weight savings might be in material performance for glide. One of the things that we note is that the natural frequency of any ski or any object is a function of its stiffness divided by its mass. 
So if you know that you need a certain stiffness in the object, like you have to have stiffness up here to have the appropriate bending radius, you need to have the carrying capacity, the material stiffness of the ski needs to be sufficient to do the job on the snow. Um, when you lighten the mass, you divide that out of the stiffness, so you're dividing your stiffness by less and you end up with a higher frequency. I don't know if you can hear it, but let's look at that. And it's whole, got a whole different tone. If you were playing these things, this would have a lower note. Does that make any difference to speed? I don't know. But I think everything, all the dynamic properties of skis make a difference. I have often felt like the frequency and material damping characteristics of skis is one of the really underexplored and under controlled characteristics of skis. But I do think the evolution of skis toward heavier constructions as companies look for speed might have something to do with those characteristics and qualities. When skis are being picked at the very highest level, very frequently they're being compared using glide outs. So if we take, say, a World Cup fleet of skis, say we get a skier who's on Fisher, they've got this whole fleet of Speedmax skis, and the service techs have to pick the skis for the racer, often the easiest way to compare a whole bunch of skis is to glide them out and to see which skis run fastest. Maybe put them through a speed trap or do paired glide outs, but isolate the skis of similar qualities in order to identify the glide component of their performance. At which point the skier is probably going to take them for a ski and test the moving characteristics of the skis and select the skis based on what's fastest. Um, some techs and skiers favor really the glide data over the moving data. Others really want to pick their skis by skiing on them. But screening the skis to start with is often a process of glide outs. And that introduces a challenge if you take the objective of making a lighter ski and you acknowledge up front that the benefit is going to come in moving speed, not in gliding speed, then you have to wonder how that ski is ever going to get picked. You got this whole fleet of speed maxes, they've been proven out over time and they glide really fast and now you introduce some helium skis and you want to get them into the testing, but they're not winning the glide outs. Do they even make it to the field testing for the athletes? Um, it's a really good question and I think it speaks in part to some of the slower adoption of these lighter materials in time. How do you get a much lighter ski adopted? Well, one way was pioneered by Solomon and this is a great, great plan. Solomon had their uh, first generation carbon ski is 453 grams. In 2017 at World Championships, they introduced a new construction and it was instantly a better ski. It has a thicker core thickness profile. So if you look at it like this, it's, it's quite a different object. I don't know if you can see that. The upper ski is the new one and it's thicker in the middle. One of the interesting things about the original carbon model ski from Solomon is that it was the softest ski in material terms of anything that we were dealing with. If we isolated the bridge camber and we measured it, it was considerably softer than any of the other brands, just the material stiffness in the bridge. And that meant that this ski depended quite a lot on the camber preload to build and develop the carrying capacity of the ski. And that reduces the universality of the performance. So this ski could be really, really good, but didn't have a broad range. When Solomon introduced their new construction, they had a higher thickness profile, um, the stiffness of any beam section is a cube function of its thickness. So as you increase the thickness, you increase the stiffness geometrically, so quite dramatically. So this, this ski built up to be a much stiffer object, more in line with what the rest of the, um, the ski world was producing, and it immediately surpassed the performance of these carbon skis. We saw domestic race fleets that were super well developed out of this uh, original carbon model get replaced by one or two pairs of, of these new skis. What's interesting is that this is also a lighter ski. This one is 419 grams. They changed a lot of the materials in this new model from the original. Um, they had to build the strength and everything else and uh, somehow they made it both thicker and stiffer but also lighter. And um, that was fine because it was also straight 
faster. It was faster in every respect. So this is an example where through material evolution, they made a better ski and it got adopted immediately, but they didn't really even talk about the weight. This remains just about the lightest ski on the market. Uh, this ski with bindings mounted on it, screwed onto it, is, uh, builds up to just a little lighter than a comparably length helium ski with bindings mounted on it. I just weighed a couple with bindings in the 186 and 187 lengths and the Solomon built up 20 grams lighter with the bindings on it. So it's not like the helium is vaulting Fisher way ahead of the pack in terms of weight. It is interesting though, when we consider that the primary reason for the development of this helium ski is to make it lighter. How have they done it? Well, they're back to transversely mounted sidewalls. This, for anyone who lived through the carbon light um, introduction, might uh, ring some alarm bells, but this is a totally, totally different object from the carbon light. It's been re-engineered from the start. They did use that same weight saving technique of making a thinner sidewall by transversely mounting um, some air core in order to develop the stiffness that they required for the ski. But they also built an object that has the material stiffness required. So this has very similar material stiffness to the Speedmax, whereas the Carbon Light ski was a softer ski in material terms than the RCS. So yeah, the ski, they really hit the mark in terms of the material stiffness. They have introduced it to the World Cup. It's been there for four years or so, and it is just in the process of being adopted. This is normal. Uh, World Cup racing is kind of conservative at its core. They don't like change. That's why a lot of them are really grumbling about floral-free racing. They, they like what they know, and they know how to make fast. But uh, the future of helium, I think, I think they've done the engineering on this ski. I think there are benefits to lighter weight when you're not giving away too much else. But I also think there are benefits to a heavier object in terms of its material properties when it comes to having a really wide and stable range of performance characteristics. So it'll be interesting to find out how this ski performs. We have maintained a cautious optimism about this ski. Uh, last year, there were very, very few available to us. We picked some and sent them out. Some that we received and didn't select ourselves. We didn't love the cameras on and we elected not to send them out. The feedback we had from customers on this ski was outstanding. People do notice the weight and the performance of the ski for the people we sent it to was very, very good. Nothing but glowing feedback. I think that uh, we'll see more and more of this and within a couple of years, I believe this helium construction will be the standard from Fisher. Will we see people pushing skis ever lighter? Let's be clear, this is not off of the scale of normal range. At this point, this puts Fisher back toward the light end of the spectrum in the marketplace. Um, they kind of share that with Solomon now with the introduction, introduction of this ski. And we'll just see where it goes in the future, but I, I don't think we're gonna see them go way, way lighter. Materially, it's possible. They could make lighter skis. Are they gonna work well? That's a more open question. I don't know the answer, but I'm pretty sure these are gonna be awesome. Also, they nailed the cambers. These things are sweet. I'm super, super pleased with what we, uh, what we found over there in our earlier trip, and we're going back to get more. These things are gonna be quite good this year.